immediately. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've always had a soft spot in my heart for funny girls. I don't know, man. Ever since I was a kid, it's just been my thing. So much so that humor was like the only trait I'd care about in regards to compatibility with a girl. I'd ignore her looks, personality, and more specific to this story, morals. Let me tell you why I don't do that anymore. I was in early middle school, so probably sixth grade. This was my first day of school, and I sat next to this girl that I'll name Jane. She was one of the funniest girls I'd ever met. She wasn't, you can't take me anywhere, funny. She was, I can't take you anywhere, funny. She had no filter. Her jokes knew no boundaries. She was the type to tell an amputee a knock-knock joke. And I was the type to give her a high five after just a flex. So we got along great. Now she was new to the school and we had the same lunch period. So when lunch came, I introduced her to my friend group and she got along well with them too. And that was more than enough for me to catch feelings. My friends and I ate outside while all of the other kids were playing stuff, meaning we could basically see everything that was going on around the playground, be it tag, football, fights, and also pranks. There was this one prank that we would see quite often. It's where you walk into a bigger kid and slap him under the man boobs. Bap, bap. For some reason, everyone found this to be absolutely hilarious. I, for one, wasn't really a fan, not because I was above it or anything. I was cool with pantsing, whipping with towels, even table topping was okay in my book because all of those things are inclusive, you know? Anybody could get it, but this, bap, bap. This just targeted fat niggas, yo. <laughs> you couldn't do this to a skinny guy and definitely not a girl. Well, I mean, uh, anyways, this just didn't feel like a prank. It just was straight up harassment but i never voiced my disapproval because i was a big follower at the time and this didn't really affect me you know i grew up mad skinny but around the 7th to 11th grade mark after making the realization that barbecue lace chips are pretty tasty i did get noticeably bigger and as the school year progressed it started to mess with my self-confidence a bit so i could not for the life of me tell jane how i felt but as days weeks months passed I, I couldn't take it anymore so one day i decided i was gonna ask her out at lunch the school bell for lunch rang and i uh, uh, put on my game face and i marched right up to jane's friend Anne, and then i tell her that i liked jane and that i wanted her to you know be my wingman and help me ease my way into her heart slowly and delicately jane Jane, you'll never guess what Johannes just told me. This girl rats immediately. Oh, I'm sorry. She literally ran to Jane, bro. I've never seen someone so enthusiastic to snitch. I see her go over to Jane. She whispers something in her ear. They both laugh, and then they look directly back at me. I try to look away and pretend that I wasn't staring at them. I hear them walking right to me, and then... They rejoin the group and Jane is on my body, bro. We're sitting next to each other. She's laughing at my jokes. Our legs are touching. And in the sixth grade world, that's about as unholy as it gets. And I'm just like, did this shit work? We finish eating and stand in a circle, which is what we usually do. And Jane pushes through like three people to stand next to me. What the heck did Anne tell this girl? Because she just straight up hooked your boy up, bro, Jane was mine i start flirting back in it was very clear that she was feeling me yo we keep talking and then jane taps my shoulder and says johannes look at me i turn and then i see her leaning in and closing her eyes whoa whoa wait, wait, wait huh? huh i look around we're outside next to a group of people and i'm like wait you're joking really R right now she winks and says don't worry about them worry about me as she grabs my arm pulls me in closer and i'm just like my mind's telling me no but my body my body <laughs> why the fuck did i do that i lean in we get closer and closer i close my eyes and then bap, bap, my eyes open wider than they ever have before no, I look at her and she's just holding in her laughter. No, did she just, I look down and <sighs> my man boobs were still jiggling. This chick just titty slapped me in front of everyone. The whole group just erupts in laughter and she loses it, yo. I, I, I don't know how to feel. What seemed like a slight slap to my chest was actually a brutalizing stab 
my heart. I look around and I just laugh it off because I know this was a prank and nothing was malicious about it. This is just how we joked with each other, but holy did that John hurt. Fun fact, this next video is actually my least favorite video on my channel. Amazing story. Great story. I was just such a fucking cornball when I narrated it, bro. Damn. If you look at just about all the videos on my channel, you'll, you'll notice a little... A little similarity. I don't be talking about girls here, and there is a very solid reason why. Simply put, I just never got practice. Prom? I didn't go to that. I was working on a video. Hanging out with friends? I didn't do that. I was working on videos. Girlfriends? <laughs> I can't even spell that. Basically, I sacrificed my social skills for a bag. I'm definitely better now. Bro, young me is trying to cap for YouTube right now, bro. I was 19 when this story happened, and I was 19 when I animated this story. I, I had not made that much progress. Definitely better now, but from the time that I started my channel to now, there have been plenty of girls that I've talked to, and <laughs> I've done some pretty embarrassing things out of sheer inexperience. The story took place last year. I'd been doing YouTube consistently for about 11 months. I'd graduated, and I was working full-time. I had maybe... 4,000 subscribers. I'm at work doing my thing and boop, this girl from high school slides in my DMs. Hey, three Ys. Okay, okay. It's been a while since we've talked, but we never talked. I think you're really cute. We should meet and catch up. Meet and catch up. Meet and catch up. E immediately catch feelings? I started to like her that day because, because duh, all a girl needed to do to get me to fall in love with her at the time was just to show me a little bit a little bit of attention. Disgusting. So a couple days go by and we, we texted a lot, like all day. When she'd get lonely, I'd be there for her. And when I'd get lonely, she'd ignore my seven consecutive texts. <laughs> Pretty normal for young Johannes. Some more time passes and we plan to meet up one day after I got off of work. I tell her that we should go to a park and that I'll bring a canvas to draw her. This is my go to date. It's cheap, fun, unique. I tell her that I get off at noon and say that we should meet up at one, you know, normal times. And then she, she suggests 7 p.m. Huh? But if we go to the park at seven, the sun will be down at like eight and we'll just be alone in the blankets in the dark. I send something along the lines of that and then she replies verbatim. That's when all the fun stuff happens. Okay. I read this DM like twice and I realize where this date is headed. I may do something that at this point I have never done in my life. Bro, I don't know why I said at this point I was a virgin when I fucking animated this. Why am I lying? I realize I'm not prepared at all. Oh, I get home, I gather my things, and take a quick trip to a CVS. Yep. After going to CVS to pick up a certain item that I'll be needing when the sun sets, we meet up at the park and... This is going to be my last interruption, but this next five seconds is single-handedly the corniest line I've ever said on my whole channel. Oh my goodness. She shows up in booty shorts. Booty shorts, you already know what's going to happen when the shorts show the booty. When the shorts... We talk while I draw and actually get a good vibe going. Like we're talking and laughing and laughing and talking and actually genuinely enjoying each other's company. But the sun sets and the real date starts. As it gets darker and darker, she gets more playful and eventually it's, it's really late, like 9 p.m. The street lights are on, the stars are out, you can hear the crickets, the park is empty. It was indeed a vibe. I'm drawing her portrait and I feel this very gentle tap on my arm. I look over and there she is, laying down in her back, giving me this look, this look that I have never seen before. She leans over, taps my hand and tells me to lay down and keep her warm. It's about to go down. I reach into my bag, her eyes widen. I open the box I got from CPS and pull out this little book light that I bought so I could see the drawing in the dark. I turn to her and say, Psh, I can't draw you and lay down, <laughs> you goof. Hey, yo, what the f I know, I know, I'm sorry. Hey, 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 sit, sit, sit down, sit, sit down. Bro, I had no sense of context clues. I came here to draw and that's what I'm gonna do. Mamba mentality. So when she said it was gonna get dark, I went to CVS and got a book light. It makes sense. I turn on the book light and continue drawing this girl. I'm sitting all the way up and barely paying attention to her. Honestly, she tries a couple more times to get me to lay down. At one point, she even puts her hair in a ponytail. Whatever that means. Sheer inexperience, man. Eventually, 
she starts texting on her phone and it's just awkwardly silence man but in my head i think it's going well i interpret it as i'm drawing her and she's admiring my skill and we're so comfortable with each other that we can communicate silently and blah 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 i know i know some time passes and before i even finish the drawing she tells me she's tired and i give her the probably not good drawing i mean this is what my animations looked like back then i hug her one-sidedly of course and she goes home i leave and I feel like that nigga, man. I feel like I just spat the most fire game. I am absolutely in love. I think this went well so perfectly, man. A couple of days later, she texts me, hey, after ignoring my <laughs> five text messages, <laughs> telling me about how bad of a day she was having at work. She's crying. I FaceTime her. We're talking for hours and me being the smart young fellow that I was. I get a great idea. While we were actually talking and vibing, she told me that she loves pistachio ice cream and I had bought her an Uber to get to the park. So I, <clears throat> so I bought her a whole tub of pistachio ice cream, door dashed it in secret. This, and this was when I was broke broke. So, ouch. I had planned to make my move when she got the ice cream over FaceTime. We talked some more and she gets a knock on her door. She gets the ice cream and does the whole, oh my gosh, you did this, aw, you're so thoughtful. Nah, no worries. There's actually something I want to tell you. I think I love, you know, you're the best brother ever. <laughs> uh, I'd like to, I'd like to say that that's the end of the story, but I spent months, months trying to escape the, the the brother zone to no avail, obviously. The takeaway from this story is read the room. It'll t it'll save you a lot of trouble. Also, when you go to CVS, buy, buy condoms. So if you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm no stranger to the waters of Tinder. Waters that were at one point tranquil, clear. Some would even say blue, but have now been tainted by hot girls and city boys. So this story starts off how every Tinder story starts. A wholesome longing for true love and affection? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. You got horny. I got horny. So I'm scrolling away on Tinder and I end up matching with this girl. Now she didn't really look like my type because she looked like a thought, bro. I, I can't lie. And honestly, that's not really my thing. Hookup culture doesn't necessarily appeal to me because like I, I need a connection with someone before I do anything with them. So we plan to meet up that day at like 8 p.m. Yeah, that brother's starving. We're texting and she's, for a lack of better words, not shy about her intentions. And I'm, for a lack of better words, not mentally pre prepared, okay? I was nervous, bro. At the time, I was not used to those type of conversations. I grew up alone and on the internet. I never went to college or even had a job for that long. So I never had an adult social life, which is where I feel most people my age learn how to flirt and communicate romantic. So I went from drawing pictures 24 seven to texting a girl about the Gawk Gawk 3000 double grip pepper grinder deluxe. Okay, I wasn't ready. Now she didn't have her own place and she was asking if she can come to mine. But the problem with that was I lived with my friend Jake and his entire family in a small apartment. So pull up there was completely out of the question and neither of us had a car so we couldn't even drive around anywhere it was really seeming like we couldn't even pull off this link <sighs> so i spent hella time cleaning out the entire apartment garage and putting the couch in there and told her to pull up in an hour that brother's starving she pulls up and we head to the garage and she is looking fine bro like too fine. She she most definitely overdressed. Like, she was looking too good for someone that didn't have a car. Like, we can't go anywhere, bro. She was really giving me Netflix and chill vibes and pulled up like I was taking her to Nobu. Like, shorty, I could only give you the chill. I couldn't even fit a TV in this garage. But we make do with what we got. So we start cuddling and kissing and stuff like that. And eventually, we start doing our thing. She unzips my pants and lets out a scream. And I'm like... <laughs> Why, thank you. But she gets off me, stands at the table, and points at the fattest roach I have ever seen. And it was right next to us. I don't know how we didn't see it. We were really getting it on with a roach right there. We worried about the wrong cop. But the situation was dire. I gotta think fast. I have to kill him before he hides somewhere, or else she's gonna get pressed, and I'm not gonna get anything tonight. So I grab a pair of shoes, throw one shoe at the roach to get it off the wall, and then use the other shoe to kill the roach. I take the roach, scrape it off the shoe, and hand the girl her shoes back. <laughs> After realizing the garage was not the move, but still being in the mood, we wander to try to find a place, and in a moment of desperation, I decide to go to my friend's mom's car. 
God, I hope she's not watching this. She has two cars and one of the cars she never uses. So I go to open the door, but it's locked. But I know that the trunk is open. So I just need to open the trunk, climb through the trunk and then open the front door. Doesn't get more down bad than this, honestly. So I open the trunk and her car alarm starts going off. And after that, I knew it was wraps, bro. I'm, I'm like panicking, trying to figure out how to turn the car alarm off. I look over at the girl and she's already hopping in an Uber, bro. She called that shit like seven minutes ago, bro. I, it was done. So eventually I go upstairs. I get my friend's mom, wake her up. And my excuse is the alarm woke me up. I think someone's trying to break into the car. So she turns off the car alarm and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like looking under the car, looking around the neighborhood, trying to find the guy who was breaking into the car. And eventually we just both go upstairs and go to sleep. I look on my phone and and I was 100% unmatched after that. Now in the past, I've talked about being an introvert in my efforts to break out of it. And I have met a really good group of YouTube friends, but like, don't really feel like they counted. So I've recently branched out and made some friends outside of YouTube. And of those friends, one of them happens to be in this story. Meet Inyong. She came here from Korea to work and we've been gym partners. She's really good at leg day and I'm not. Oh, wow. So we kind of help each other out. But of all my friends, she's definitely the one that goes out the most. So by association, I'm always getting dragged out to do some type of side quest. I mean, she once fell off an electric scooter in front of my crib, so I had to clean up more blood off the street than a DEA agent. She once got drunk with her friend at like 2 a.m. on a Monday, and I had to take them both home. She, I mean, a homeless almost broke into my car when I was with her. The people like her are the reason that I stay inside. So one day I'm at the crib and I get a text from Minyoung telling me that she got drunk in an Uber the night before and accidentally left her phone in the car. And she knows this because her laptop is tracking her phone to an address about 15 minutes away. So me being a W, w man, I stop working and pick her up. She connects her laptop to my phone's hotspot and we head to the location. Now I'm expecting this to be in and out. We drive to whatever suburban household the phone is in. We grab it and then drive out into the sun. So I'm telling her, yo, call the Uber guy to let him know that we're on the way to get the phone. And she's like, actually, I can because my friend is the one who called the Uber. He's at work right now, so I don't have the information. So me being a W man, I give her my phone so she can call hers. And hopefully the Uber guy picks it up. She dials her phone and to my surprise, it starts ringing. And then someone declines the call. We call again. Call has been forwarded straight to, to voicemail. Voice. We look at the laptop and the phone just moved to some shopping center area. Inyong panics and tells me to chase him and I can feel the adrenaline rush to my foot when I hit the brake and a U-turn and go home. I'm not about to get hooked into a high-speed chase so you can check your B-reel. <laughs> So I tell Inyong that we should just turn around and go home because the Uber driver is clearly doing Uber and it doesn't make sense to chase him because find my iPhone doesn't update in real time. So I go home and we're in my parking lot. I start to call Uber support to see if we can get the guy's information. I look over at Inyong's computer to figure out what shopping center it is. And then I realize not only is her phone in a shopping center, but it's at an iPhone repair shop. Oh shit, this dude is actually stealing her phone. So me being a decently good friend, I race back to where the shopping center is. And Shorty's in the car like asking me what I'm gonna do if the guy has the phone and won't give it back to her. And I know, I know what she's insinuating, but I'm not about to get a sentence so you can check your text. <laughs> we pull up and walk in and there's a couple of people, but no one that looks suspicious. But I know the phone is somewhere in the building. It says so on the laptop, someone in here has that junk. So I asked the owner if he's seen any purple iPhone 14 Pros. And he says, well, I haven't purchased any iPhone 14s. The purple one, right? Yeah, but no, no need to worry. I, I, buy, I don't buy locked phones anyways. Okay, well, here's my phone number in case anyone turns in a purple iPhone 14 Pro. I give him my number. Now, this is a chess move because not only does the store owner now know to call me if someone sells him the phone, but I spoke loudly enough to let anyone in the store who was trying to sell the phone know that we're looking for it. So we go back to my car and wait it out. And wait it out and wait it out. And eventually we get the information from her friend, call Uber support and report her phone is missing. Her Uber driver drives a black van and I didn't see any in the lot and I was getting tired. So me being a, me being an L man, I give up and go home, bro. Nothing was gonna happen. It's already been hours. So I go home, get back to work and eventually the day ends. I start getting ready for bed. Mm -hmm. 
But the vibration of my phone stops me in my tracks. I grab it and see an incoming call from Enyo. I got my phone back. How? So apparently hours later after I dropped her off, I'm talking like 9 p.m., Uber support hit her up telling her that the driver of the van said he didn't have the phone. But the location on the phone kept changing. Eventually, it stopped at a house. And at this point, she was completely fed up. So In Young and two of her friends drive to the location of the phone. They pull up, and the area is nothing like I imagined. Window grills, broken down cars. This dude lived in the slums. The location of the laptop led to this parking lot full of cars. Her friend stops his whip, turns off the lights, and waits. And as cars and peoples came and left, they kept tabs to see if the location changed on the laptop. And at one point, this man walks right by the car hops in a blue jeep and leaves and so does the location in young looks at her friend yo follow him yo i'm definitely following him. yo you're what you're you're lying right like you called the cops no my friend being a w man follow him after he left let me continue the story well um actually i'm telling the story because you're then finish it <laughs> Her friend skirts off after the Jeep close, but not too close, and they eventually end up at a diner. And luckily for them, there was a cop nearby at a burrito shop across the street. So they go to him and tell the cop the whole situation. The cop goes in the diner and five minutes later comes out with a man, his wife, and two kids. None of the people, mind you, look like In Young's Uber driver, but the man did have In Young's phone, so he must have bought it off the Uber guy and then tried to unlock it at the iPhone repair store. That explains why I didn't see the black van. You know what that means, right? In Young left her phone in an Uber, and the next day, <laughs> the Uber driver sold that. I respect the bag chase. The ability to sell a used iPhone in a day. Th this man needs to be hired by Apple. I, I ain't even gonna lie to you. In Young then proves the phone is hers and got it back. And the whole time I'm hearing this on the phone, I'm in my head like, thank goodness. I dropped you off because if I had actually went with you, I wouldn't have gotten anything done for that day. They were literally out there for like six hours at this point. I just don't understand why you would commit a crime as an Uber driver. Like I'm not tapped into the situation anymore, but I know for a fact the Uber driver got caught because we have all of your information. And honestly, he would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for that meddling find my iPhone. So moral of the story, Android is ass. So back when I was a young and I used to do martial arts, Taekwondo to be exact. And to anyone who knows anything about martial arts, Taekwondo doesn't do shit, but you could not tell 13 year old me that, man. I was able to chop not one, but two wooden planks. And the fact that those planks had the sturdiness of one ply toilet paper did not matter to me, because oh, I was still that nigga. And I wanted everyone around me to know that. And it was so corny, bro. Oh my God. So in middle school, I had this dance class. And one day the teacher passed out these pieces of paper with moves on it, like spin, kick, slide. And she told us to choreograph a dance routine out of the moves on the paper and then perform it for the class. So we're choreographing our dances and memorizing them. Now there was this girl in the class who I'll name Amber, who was what I would like to call my crush of the semester. The way school went for me was I'd start a semester, pine over a girl, not talk to her, get new class, and repeat now this dance was actually our final exam so i was running out of time to make my move on amber now was i planning on talking to her no that goes against my crush of the semester schedule lock in instead i was gonna riz her up with dance like some type of exotic bird or a drunk frat guy at a bar so we finished choreographing our dances we sit on the floor in a circle and one by one we go up to perform in the center kids would come up do a little two-step kick here slide there and then end it with the spin and be done in 10 seconds max my turn comes up and i did a martial arts <laughs> performance dog i saw a spinning kick and decided to turn into john wick at one point i just started straight up freestyling bro i did a turtle style spin jump kick nigga turtles don't even jump i landed and looked my teacher in the eyes and she's like uh great job yo i start yelling bro i'm feeling like the dragon warrior but the only thing i'm dragging is this performance i'm shadow boxing for like five minutes once again the average performance time was like 10 to 15 seconds so imagine how long five minutes felt i finish stand in the middle but that's not where the class lost it because my dumb ass does a bow afterwards bro oh my god so i get up and i'm you know looking around waiting for my praise but the only thing i got was the quietest laughter i have ever heard in my life 
kids are either turned around completely or looking at me stone faced, bro. I look over at Amber and her head is in her shirt, bro. She couldn't even watch. The craziest part is this is not even my worst attempt at impressing a girl with my Taekwondo prowess because if I acted like this in school, you could only imagine how I acted in the actual dojo. I had a big crush on this girl named Jessica and from the minute I saw her, everything. <sighs> Everything I did in that dojo from the moment she joined was done to impress her. This one day we had a drill where the sensei would set up four bags and we were supposed to go down performing various moves. Now Taekwondo is a martial art mainly revolving around kicking so we practiced various kicks. Now me being a taller kid with longer more powerful legs compared to the other 5'2 to 5'3 12 year olds in the class I was actually pretty decent at kicking so much so that I would sometimes be told by the sensei to help instruct the other kids. And it just so happened that Jessica was struggling with her side kick form so when I heard hey yo yo Go help Jessica. Needless to say, I was on that. So I pull her to the side and help her with her form, which was a great icebreaker for me to get to know her. We start chopping it up. We talk about different types of cartoons we watch. I'm making her laugh. It's going good. I feel like J. Cole in his math class. Ugh, Mr. Cole, passing notes in math class. Let me see that. Should be something you should be able to share with the class. Do you ride on it? Do you sit? Baby, you don't want my little man. Up. Hey, yo. W race. So we finish up and she even gave me a little business card. I don't know why she was carrying this, but it was a little card that had her iMessage email on it. And I remember staring at this card like it was a winning lottery ticket. I mean, it was kind of my first time ever getting a girl's number. So I was lit. After taking my dub, we go back to the line and get onto the next drill. Now with this drill, we have the same four bags as before. We're supposed to punch one, punch another, kick one, then kick another. Now the kicks were back roundhouse kicks. My favorite kicks because of your ability to use your whole body to build momentum to kick the bag as hard as you physically can. So we get in the line and the kids are doing their thing. Punch, punch, kick, kick, punch, punch, kick, kick. Everyone's going down and it gets to my turn. I look over at Jessica and I peep that she's looking at me. So I'm thinking I gotta make an impression before I slide in her DMs. So I get to the bag like punch made dev, get in my stance and get ready to hit it. But the thing is, all my power came from my legs because all I did was kick. So I didn't quite know how to throw a punch. So my punches we're not impressive at all i barely hit the back i look at jessica and she's still looking at me so i know this next punch has to be the one but the next punch i had to do was a left-handed punch which was significantly weaker than my right-handed punch so i go for the bag i barely even hit it bro my glove even slips off the side and everything i'm getting embarrassed at this point i glance at jessica and she isn't even looking at me anymore but now i'm at the kicking part of the drill i get to the bag deep in my stance breathe in and kick the bag as hard as i can the thunderous noise echoes through the dojo and the chatter in the class stops and jessica was looking at me again so this is good because the kick was with my left leg my weaker leg so now it was time to use my right. I get to the bag, widen my stance. Jessica's eyes are fixated on me. I get ready, inhale, twist my body, and using every ounce of strength in my soul. Kick the bag so hard that the person holding it falls over. During these drills, we don't use the boxing bags with sand on the bottom. We use these targets that people hold. So I kicked the target so hard that the person holding it fell over. And I've never done that before. So I'm feeling like Goku. I look over at Jessica to see what she thought of my kick. But she was too busy on the floor in pain because she was the one holding the bag. I kicked the f out of this girl bro knocked the wind out of her body instead of looking like goku i was looking like chris brown i cannot bring myself to understand why i would kick the girl that i wanted to talk to hard as fuck but the logic in my 12 year old head was hey if i kick this girl hard enough she'll know how strong i am and be like wow yo yo you're so strong i'm glad you helped me with your kicks but instead she was like Oh, <laughs> my stomach. Ah, she had tears in her eyes. The class rushes over to make sure she's okay, and she is laid out on the floor, bro. Some kids help her. I go over to ask if she was okay, but the sensei stopped me. She was having none of that, bro. She was on my ass. Understandably so. I just kicked the wind out of a girl half my size. So I go home embarrassed as hell that day. I get in my room, grab my iPad, and send an iMessage to the email on the card, hoping that she replies. And to my surprise, she does. And funnily enough, we're actually friends to this day but before you even try it no her name is not jessica so don't bother looking through my instagram at yo yo wait or wait underscore official in an attempt to find her but yeah 
that's the story. So I recently made and deleted a video talking about how I've been slacking on the channel and I gave a number of reasons why. Well, one of, if not the main reason I was slacking was because I downloaded Tinder. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I animated 50% of my last video in the span of 20 hours. Well, that was only possible because of the immense strength I gained in my thumbs from the hours and hours of swiping I did on the stupid waste of an And I already hear you guys in the comments, but yo, yo, if you don't like online dating, why don't you go talk to women in real life? No. So one night I'm scrolling away on Tinder and I see this girl and the thing that stood out to me was the fact that she was an artist. So I swiped right and to my surprise, when we met, she immediately text me and bro if you looked up into the sky you could visibly see a hole in the ozone forming by how much this girl was gassing me up she's complimenting my art my hair everything so i match energy and we end up texting for a little while but if there's one thing about me i am a much better facetimer than i am a texter so i asked for her number i shoot her a call and i'm flirting it up we're joking and laughing we plan to meet the next saturday this was on a sunday night so throughout that week i'm talking to her when i can to keep her interested but it's it's kind of hard because I'll randomly dip from the conversations for hours at a time so I can work on my animations But I also don't want to tell her about my channel So I don't tell her why I'm gone not the best strategy but it's working. Fast forward a couple days and I wake up on Saturday. I get dressed I go to brush my teeth and I'm shaking Am I nervous? I look in the mirror and realize I'm sweating. I'm breathing heavily. My eyes are dilated I look down my legs are shaking more than A person using an airplane bathroom. But I try to calm myself down. What? what do I look like being nervous? I don't even know this girl's last name. I had some free time before the date, so I start to record audio for my next video to calm my nerves. I sit down, turn on my microphone, and since my videos aren't the, the quietest of videos, I always like to yell into the microphone to make sure my audio isn't distorted. So I press the record button, I take a deep breath. Testing! Ah! I clench my ears and fall out of my chair because I didn't have my headphones plugged into my computer, meaning my scream was picked up on my microphone, played through the speaker, picked up from the microphone again, and played through the speakers, resulting in this horribly loud, distorted sound, causing my ears to ring like crazy. So there I am, laying on the floor in a ball in my closet, and then the time for the date comes. So I collect myself the most I can and I head out. We meet at the sushi place. We sit down and get to talking, but I'm still nervous. All the things that went down this morning caused me to be a little in my head. And I'm talking way differently in person than I was over FaceTime. <laughs> hey, keep talking like that. We gonna fight when I see you. Hey, you're here. Uh, oh, you wanted to hug? Uh, my bad. So, uh, good, good morning, e evening, evening. Uh, how was your, how was your day? <clears throat> it was just not looking good for me, yo. I was just too deep in my head to be myself. And honestly, I'm usually really good at first impressions, but for some reason with this girl, I... <clears throat> but if there is one good thing about being a storyteller for a living, if the combo with the person gets dry, I literally have a catalog of fully fleshed out memorized stories in my head. So I try to break the ice a little bit. I tell her the story of me accidentally eating that edible and we actually start laughing and the positive feedback makes me calm down a bit and relax. And I think she realizes that I'm comfortable so she gets comfortable too. And just like that, the conversation is flowing and we're laughing and joking. The food gets here, I start eating and then I hear, and honestly, I can't believe she said that, right? Oh, she, whoa, was she talking? Yeah, and then he was like, wow, are you really gonna do that? And honestly, I can't believe they were talking whoa, like- Whoa, is she talking right now? I take another bite and realize something horrible. I can't hear and chew at the same time. I think the audio messed up from earlier messed up my hearing because I could only hear my chewing. But now I'm in trouble because I can't just stop eating, but I also can't come clean about my hearing because I don't wanna tell this girl about my channel. So throughout this conversation, I just say, yeah, mm-hmm, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Over and over again while hoping for the best and it works, the, the date ends and she's like, no one's home right now, we should go over to my place. I just came to girl without hearing a word that she said. Future don't got nothing on me. She grabs my hand and leads me out of the restaurant and the city lights are like reflecting off of us. I look at her and I'm just like, wow. 
look at her I, I was so nervous about this date but this is going so well this girl it is amazing as we're walking out this girl trips and lands clean on her face on the concrete yo yo yo, yo are you good Can, let me help you she darts up and looks me in the face and i kid you not says you should make a youtube video about this i should what how, how does she know how, how does she know about my no are, are, are you good she gets up, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm fine, but wasn't that funny? <laughs> you should definitely make an animation about that. Ah, yeah, so that's what this was. We walk towards the Uber to go to her place, and the whole time, she's just going on and on and on about how she's never been animated before, and I'm just like, this girl really just fell face first on concrete just to make a cameo in an animation. Honestly, to this day, I have no clue how she found me. When I talk to girls, I do a pretty good job of hiding it. Anyways, we get to the Uber, but I tell her I'm tired and I better get going. She tries to convince me to go, but I, I was done at that point. I dap her up. Yes, I dap her up and I head home. I go to sleep and since this, I have not talked to her since. That was just weird, honestly. And also, if you think I gave her what she wanted, Nah, I completely changed her race, appearance, and everything in this animation. Aside from recess and PE as a kid, I never really played any type of sport. I know my appearance is otherwise, but I'm just tall, and my body puts on muscle for some reason. I could not tell you why. See, the thing about my size is that it gives me this obnoxious sense of confidence to do things that I see actually athletic people do. Like, I'll see some crazy shit, and like gaslight myself into thinking that I can do it. Like an Olympic diver can jump from 32 feet in the air, flip around in the most elegant way with perfect understanding of physics, and then land with perfect execution. <laughs> but that nigga can't bench 315, bro. I, I could jump off a diving board and do the So recently I went hooping with some friends, a sport that I have zero experience in. I got no badges, bro. That's tough. So we're at a 24 hour fitness. I'm shooting by myself and my friends are running a game. And after about 30 minutes, I'm not hitting anything. I look over at my friends and they're hitting three pointers, fancy layups. I'm at the free throw line looking at them and something tells me to try to dunk for no reason. I have never in my life even attempted to dunk. To be honest, I don't even know how high I can jump because I know I have no business being more than like two inches off the ground because I'm, I'm gonna hurt myself. But here I am sprinting to the hoop. I get closer, I take one large step. Oof, I take another large step. Oof, I swing my arms and jump as high as I physically can and just slam the ball into the rim. But I can't even pay attention to the basketball hurtling to the other side of the gym because I'm realizing, oh shit, I gotta land. The fact that I have time to think about it shows that my 220 pound ass was way higher then I had any business being. My knees are not meant to take the full force of my body weight hurtling to the ground without basketball shoes, bro. I'm wearing Converse. I'm about to catch the full force of my body with zero support. Like I'm looking at the ground knowing this shit gonna hurt. I land. Operation in knee pain, bro. My shit hurts to this day. I'm telling you all of this to illustrate my tendency to completely overestimate the physical capabilities of my body. So here's the actual story. So I'm swiping on Tinder and I end up matching with this girl. We start talking, we set up a date for the next day. Either my game is immaculate or this girl doesn't know about stranger danger. The next day comes along and I'm at the gym because that is a pre-date essential. Men, no matter what body type you have, get a pump before going on a date. It's like getting an erection but on your muscles so i'm there to hit a quick full body thing i'm kind of in a rush though because the date's in like an hour and a half and the gym is like 20 minutes away and i still need to drive back and get ready so i speed through my upper body stuff and now i just have legs i head to the squat rack and this dude catches my attention because of how freaking massive his legs were this dude was thick like jump to get into jeans thick like ice spice music video background dancer thick bro this guy anyways he's doing this squat variation where his feet are together and he's standing on top of a 25 pound weight and he's just squatting like that now me on a time crunch sees this and i'm like oh he knows what he's doing i'm gonna just do that so i hop on the rack i don't warm up or stretch because i don't really got time for that i toss a plate and a 25 on the bar and i get to it very early in i realized something about bro he is not okay mentally because there is no way he enjoys this variation of squat because my quads are on fire, bro. I am in 
pain. But this small waist pretty face with a big bank ass nigga is just repping out 315 with this form. So I push through and do four sets of 12. I re-rack and see him go down to a weight that I'm actually able to do with the regular squat form. So I think to myself, how cool would it be if I could match weight with someone this big, even if it's just for one set? I have no business doing this weight with this new form because i'm gonna hurt myself so i loaded up get ready to do my set and it was horrible bro if i wasn't motivated by this dude's legs i wouldn't have gotten it up pause but by god's mercy i complete the rep and proceed to do that three more times so with nothing spotting me but ego and hopes and dreams i re-rack pack it up and go home now i'm limping to my car but that's ordinary if you hit legs hard enough so i get home get dressed and head out to pick up shorty so we go on the date we have a good time i take her back to my place we chill there for a little bit and one thing leads to another and we start wrestling so i put on the proper gear to protect myself and i start doing my thing i'm standing on the edge of the wrestling mat and all is going well until i feel this tingling in my quad so i grab my quad and keep going but eventually that tingling turns into a cramp now anyone who has caught leg cramps before knows that i would be in the fetal position but i don't want this girl to think i'm bad at wrestling so the show goes on but like the cramp gets worse and worse until i eventually have to stop she looks at me like what's wrong not nothing i just got to go to the bathroom real quick so i get up but i'm telling you bro i'm supposed to be limping right now but my leg is in too much pain for me to walk normally but i cannot give this girl the ick i want to give her the so i walk into the bathroom totally normal i close the door and I start going through it, bro. I look at my leg and it is fully flexed, bro. I cannot move at all. I'm just looking at the mirror in absolute pain, but I can't grunt or anything because I don't want to alarm shorty. So I'm Bro, I am dying in that bathroom quietly of course but like i'm trying to figure out what the hell happened but then i realized i didn't stretch before i did those material girl ass squats leg day cramps for me at least last forever so i know i'm not going to be able to finish with this girl so i cut my losses and put my foot against the wall next to the door and start stretching it out so i'm waiting for it to go away but then i catch a cramp in my other leg i'm telling you right now i have never fallen to the ground at a faster velocity bro i don't got any legs what am i supposed to do my naked body slaps my cold bathroom floor i knock things off my counter and i'm just laying there shorty comes in and sees me sprawled out gripping both of my legs and the jig is up i'm caught because mind you i still haven't let out a peep but the second i realized she caught me Ugh, I let, oh, I'm going crazy, bro. I'm letting out like five minutes of pain. And this poor girl doesn't know what to say because she had no clue I caught the cramp in the first place. So I tell her what happened and she helps me up and I'm limping to the bed. But bro, I catch two calf cramps. I shoot both of my legs out in pain, bro. I got four separate cramps in my legs at this point. I fall and this girl could not support my body weight, bro. We both fall. She hits her face on the ground and I land right on top of her hard like she's gonna feel it tomorrow hard type shit i try to save the situation try to like tell some jokes but there there isn't much i can do i'm not gonna lie we chill on the floor for a little bit but eventually she gets up and leaves and i'm just staring at the ceiling thinking about how i had no business doing those squats like that without stretching moral of the story know what your body is capable of if you're scrolling around on dating apps and they start suggesting you girls that live 50 to 80 miles away i'm gonna need you to stop swiping and start stroking bro you ran out of holes to scare there are plenty of fish in the sea and you caught none of them face ass, but i'm in the same boat with you in 2020 to 2021 i was on tinder bumble hinge heavy bro and this is what i looked like only screen i should have been tapping was the one on a treadmill i could not pull a girl if she had a handle attached to it so needless to say on dating apps i was not matching with girls who had options i was matching with girls who lived in the middle of nowhere well that's a good thing because i don't want some harlot who has options in my bugatti wrong obviously i don't want to talk to some girl who has the whole u.s census in her ig videos, but i would rather get picked from someone's options than to be someone's only option because when you're the only person that someone is talking to they will attach to you strong and fast and that's just a recipe for disaster <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So I matched with this girl who lives in a small town in Texas about an hour away from me. We talked here and there and I knew she was failing me, but like since there was such a distance in between us, none of us really took it seriously. But this one day I got a text from her saying that she would be on 6th Street with some college friends. Now 6th Street is this long road in Austin, Texas that's just riddled with like different clubs and bars and stuff. And at the time I lived downtown on 6th Street. If you see me, you Never doing that again. But the stars aligned. I mean, we were going to finally meet. So, you know, I had to hit her with something suave. You know what I'm saying? I hit her with the without me. Told her that if she came a couple hours early, I could take her out and show her around town a little bit. I didn't want to go clubbing with her because I don't drink and I don't smoke. And I've tried the whole being the sober guy at a club thing. Yo, yo, oh my God, you can't take me anywhere. I'm so fucked. Not for me. So she pulls up already wearing her club clothes. And trust me, trust me, I did not mind. But taking her on a cafe date at 12 p.m. was definitely a very interesting experience. But that aside, she was mad cool, funny, we got along, like we had a good time. We walked around the town and stuff i took her back to my crib but then eventually it was time for her to go out and party with her friends oh my god, god. Oh and i did not go but after that she texts me that she had a good time she goes back home and she came to austin to party with her friends often so we actually ended up meeting a good two or three more times every time she came to have fun with her friends this one night i get a text from her saying hey i'm gonna be clubbing with some friends i was wondering if i could come over but i had an animation to finish that night so i tell her i couldn't and she doesn't respond so i assume she's just partying with her friends and stuff so i go back to work but some time passed and I get a message so long that it makes the Declaration of Independence look like a suggestion of downtime. If I gotta scroll twice to read some shit, I'm not reading it. But I didn't even have to read this whole script that she sent me because the use of capital letters and the curse words showed me that she wasn't fucking with me at the moment. Now, I know she's drunk right now. And the way I move, anytime a woman tells me something while she's drunk, I always take it with a grain of salt. So I tell her, yo, have fun tonight. Let's talk about this tomorrow. And she doesn't respond. A couple hours later, I get a call from her asking if I could pick her up because apparently she left her friends to go blow off some steam and now she's lost and drunk and scared even though i was really busy at the time I, I still care about this girl i didn't want anything to happen she's alone and i knew she was on 6th street so i didn't mind the five minute drive to pick her up so i asked for the address of where she's at and she's somewhere in north austin in what universe does leaving my friends to blow off some steam translate to going 30 minutes up north now i'm mad because i gotta go on a whole commute to pick her up and a whole commute to come back home and i should be animating this video that i gotta be dropping the next day i really should have hit her with the niggas die every day and let her fend for herself but instead i got in my car and i started driving so i'm on the highway for a good like 10 minutes and then i get a call from oh yo where are you I'm on the way i'm like 15 minutes away 15 what i'm on 6th street what are you talking about? The address you sent me was in North Austin. I'm partying. Obviously, I'm on 6th Street. Why didn't you say anything? Clearly, the address was wrong. Hurry up. I'm scared. Deep breaths. So after finding out that it's my fault that she sent me the wrong address, I hit a U-turn and I start heading to where she actually is, which was five minutes away from my crib. I pull up and she's there with like three other girls drunk talking about, hey, my, my friends need rides home too. Deep breaths. My car is now a city bus. I'm playing crazy taxi if all the characters were drunk college. Homies. I drop one friend off here. I drop another one off there. This one wants to get food. I drop this one off there. And eventually it gets to me and her in the car. And I'm not saying anything. No music. No, I haven't given this girl a name yet. We're going to name her B. I eventually get to B's college friend where she stays with when she goes clubbing. Get there. I tell her good night. And she hits me with the, I'm not tired yet. You better watch some white noise or George Lopez or something. Good night. Tell her to leave. And she's like, no. And I'm like, huh? And in this moment, it was almost as if she sobered up completely because she says in a serious tone for the first time of the night, I know if I leave, you'll never talk to me again. And hearing this gives me a look into the perspective of this girl. I mean, she wanted to hang out with me and she just wants to feel heard and loved. And she doesn't want me to never talk to her again. So I'm trying to get her out of the car so I can never talk to her again. And she is not budging at all, bro. We're arguing. She's crying. I'm trying to get home. I get tired of it. So I just turn the car off, get out, and just wait by the front door of the dorm. Mind you, it's been like an hour now. So my work shit is completely out of the question. And I'm mad about that because now she's not only playing with my time, but she's playing with my money. I won't be able to finish the video the next day so I'm, I'm not hearing her out at all i'm waiting by the door and she's just staying in the car and i swear like 10 minutes pass and nothing happens but then i see her try to hop from the back seat into the driver's seat and at that moment i was like now it's my chance so i rush over to the door open it, and try to grab her out of the car i grab her arm and she starts screaming hysterically bro and i took the fattest of steps back because that shit looked 
crazy. There's people on the side of the road looking at me crazy. I'm, I'm nope, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so I completely leave the car alone and go back to the front door. And I'm trying to like think if there's anyone that I know that she knows that I could hit up. I'm like replaying all of our conversations in my head, trying to think of something. And I remember her college friend who lives in the dorm, her name is Anaya. So I go through her following, type in Anaya's name, and she pops up. So I shoot her a DM like, yo, can you get your friend? She's in my car, she's not leaving. And thank God she answered, bro. So she comes down, goes to the car, talks to her, takes another like 15 minutes, grabs her out of the car, and they go home. And I skirt the fuck out of there, bro. I get on the road and B starts sending me texts apologizing profusely and i'm looking at this shit like this gotta be the craziest situation i've ever been in with a girl that was until i matched with another girl who makes b look like the virgin mary so there's one time after a long tiring day of scaring all the local hoes i matched with this girl who lived in a small town and we end up hitting it off and we did so well that we actually ended up facetiming that night i'm not gonna say her pictures didn't look good but she definitely looked way better than i expected that was a red flag because when you're ugly finding a cool attractive girl that actually likes you feels like finding a nice car for a cheap price on facebook marketplace you'd be looking at it like you gotta be like a salvage title or something like it's too good to be true i'm gonna need the car facts i really have any options so i continue to see it through and she ended up being really cool we had the same interests humor all that talk for a couple hours we end the call and then she ends up sending me this whole paragraph about how much fun she has and she ended it with i really like you colon three or is that called a colon bracket i don't know it was a heart nonetheless now at the time i appreciated that and i thought it was really cute but little did i know that was going to be the beginning of a nightmare so we keep it pushing texting every day calling every day good morning text good night text the whole thing and the more we talk the closer we get we do this for about a week and eventually we end up planning a link up i give her my address she gives me her address we're talking about it and i find out that this girl lives three hours away from me bro that's six hours there in yeah. But I got the rose gold shades on, so I agree to pick her up, take her to my place for the weekend. So the week goes on, and as the day that I'm supposed to pick her up approaches, the reality is I'm an animator, and this stuff takes time. Driving six hours for anyone really just doesn't align with my career goals. And I didn't want to lead her on, because if we linked, we would end up getting even closer, and then maybe she'll want something more, which I would not be able to give her, especially with the distance in between us. So as gently as I could, I tell her all that. <laughs> She was not feeling none of that, bro. <laughs> you just don't like me. No, no, it's not you. You're all the same. I'm sorry. Why can't I just drive to you? No, I don't want her to drive to me because once again, I don't want to lead her on. I tried to explain that to her, but she is fixated on pulling up. She's saying, we'll make it work. I'll drive. We go back and forth. She gets in her car on the phone and I am practically begging her to go back into her house. Eventually, I get tired of it and I end up telling her, yo, do not pull up to my crib. If you do, I will not answer the door. Good night. She gets out of her car, goes back into the house, and hangs up on me. I go to sleep and I wake up the next day hearing nothing from her. So I'm thinking she needs some space. So I go on about my day. I get some work done. I go to the gym. I'm doing my thing there. And then I get a call. I look at my phone and I see that it's her. So I pick it up and I hear nothing but her crying, bro. She is hysterical. So I'm in the middle of the gym trying to get her to tell me what's going on. And through her sob, she tells me that she got into a car accident. Now me not even thinking about yesterday, I asked her, yo, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Do you need me to stay on the phone? No, I need you to come here though, because I'm in your your house in my house what are you talking about she shares her location and it's at my house so i'm on the phone like what do you mean accident what did you hit and she goes right back to crying bro she is not saying a word i hang up on her and i get in my car and i speed to where she's at and the whole time i'm in the car i'm just thinking about how i told her not to pull up and she pulled up it got to an accident. I turned the corner of my street expecting to see the worst and I see your car and that hoe is in pristine condition. Not a dent in sight. I get out the car looking for Mermaid Man thinking she hit the invisible boat mobile or some shit. Her car door swings open. She comes to me crying talking about, I just really wanted to see you. I really wanted to make this work and you weren't hearing me out. And she, like she got me. Oh, but I didn't fuck up the camera with that. But that was my first time meeting her, by the way. Craziest first impression of someone I've ever gotten in my life. She got me, though. Like, I'm in this parking lot looking dumb as hell. So I'm not even saying anything to the girl. I go on my car. She's, like, banging on my window and shit. But I just drive. I couldn't really go anywhere far because the crazy-ass girl was at my crib. But I left for a couple hours. I come back. 
car is not there. I check Instagram and like Tinder and stuff. And obviously I'm blocked and we never talked again. The thing is, I actually don't even think that girl is crazy. It's just, that's what happens when you have no options. You fall hard and you fall fast. And I'm no exception to that. Growing up, I wasn't really seen as attractive by the girls in my class. So when I got older and was on Tinder and was finally getting attention from women, a very few amount of them, mind you, that was enough for me to even go crazy. And yeah, I had a problem with attaching really fast. Now I'm not gonna say I did crazy stuff like that, but it would really get me in my feelings. Back in like 2019, I matched with this girl who I named Callie. Now this had to have been like my third or fourth first date like ever. We meet at this boba spot and the date was, it was all right, but we didn't really click like that. So we kind of just went our separate ways. Now some time passes and I match with this girl who I named Jasmine. Now Jasmine had to have been the baddest girl I've ever matched with, bro. And she was so dry, bro. She could not hold a conversation to save her life. Hey, you, money in the bag. Okay. Okay. And because of her dryness, I could not lock down a date. It was impossible to talk to the girl. But it's one day I'm working on a video and I get a text saying, hey, I'm going to be at the downtown park taking a walk. You trying to come along. So I'm like, my soldiers push forward. Yeah. My soldiers scream out. Yeah. My soldiers rage. Yeah. I'm sure I'm down. Now, this is before I had a car, but I still lived downtown and the park was like a two minute walk away. So I make my way there and she texts me that she's in the parking lot. I'm in the parking lot too and I'm looking for her, but I don't see anyone but a man in this old couple. So I text her, yo, where are you at? I don't, I don't see you. And she stops responding. So I just make my way to the park and the man that I saw earlier stops me. They stop me and say hello. And after hearing the voice, I realize it's not a man, but it's a girl with really short hair. Hey, yo, yo, long time no see. Huh? I'm in my head like, it, it has been a long time no see. Cause I have never seen you in my life. Now I'm confused as to how this random girl knows me, but like, I, I, I'm not trying to be rude. So I'm like, you know, hey, how's it been? Da, 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 da. I'm trying to bullshit the conversation. The whole time though, I'm on my phone waiting to see if Jasmine's gonna hit me back, but she hasn't hit me in like 15 minutes at this point. So I'm like, I got one, I got stood up and two, I got to talk to this girl who is not leaving. She is talking to me like we are long lost friends, bro. I don't know this girl. That is until she says, hey, I'm glad you can make it. Are you ready to go on this walk? This was the girl I was texting the whole time. And no, Jasmine did not catfish me. Let me explain something real quick. As I stated earlier, I struggled with attaching to women too fast. And something I would do to counteract it was I would not save a girl's number if we hadn't met three times. Also, if I didn't have your number saved, anytime we talk, I'd delete the conversation to keep myself from double texting. And this method usually works because I don't talk to multiple women at a time. So when I got that, let's go to the park text this morning, I assumed it was Jasmine because she was the only girl I was talking to. I have no clue who this random ass girl is. But we go on the walk and she's like holding my hand and shit. So apparently we've met. I, I want to say we were walking for like 15 minutes. And I swear the whole time I was just trying to connect dots to figure out who this girl is. Eventually we get to the top of this hill and sit down. And like I'm trying to build up the courage to ask her what her name is. But she hits me with the most clutch alley oop that she could have. Hey, I know you go by yo-yo, but what's your real name? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I do go by Yo-Yo, but my name's Johannes. Do you got any nicknames? Oh, my name's Callie. Callie! Huh? Nothing. Yeah, my name's Callie, but I've been going by Cal lately. It was the boba date girl, bro. The date was so ass that I forgot her. And the thing is, she cut her hair so much that she was completely unrecognizable to me. And of course, since we only went on one date, I never saved her number. So after finally realizing who she was, I was able to actually give the date my full attention. And we had a great time, bro. She, I don't know what was going on the first date, but we were vibing completely differently this time. And she was actually an artist, an animator even. So we went back to my place, we made an animation, we chilled. We had a blast. She goes home and I break my rule. I save her number. And I'm telling y'all, bro, at this time of my life, something switched in my head when I saved someone's number, bro. I got extremely attached that night. I can't lie. So much so that I sent her a whole paragraph talking about how much fun I had. And she was like, I had fun too. And in that moment, it was smooth. We actually ended up meeting like three or four more times. But as time progressed, she started slowly backing off. Her response times became sparse. Her responses became dry. And that's usually a sign to back off and charge it to the game. You said charge. <laughs> I went full throttle, bro. I got to double, triple, quadruple texting like I was running up an air combo in Street Fighter, bro. It was not a good look, bro. I was bothering this girl so much to the point where I ended up getting left on red and unfollowed on IG. And I can't lie, that shit hurt. 
And the worst part about that shit was that I still could not get Jasmine to go on a date with me, bro. I was blown. I ended up deleting Tinder. So time passes after that and life starts looking good again. And I actually end up going to get my first tattoo. The one on my hand. So I park on the side of the street and I make my way to the shop. I'm walking and I see this girl. It was this really, really beautiful girl holding hands with this, what I would assume was a girl as well. But she had a shaved head and like a tattoo sleeve. And as I made my way closer to him, I realized... It was fucking Cali, bro. And I'm just scoping the scenery. She has a bag on her with a pin that has the trans flag. When I saw that, it just started connecting, bro. The two haircuts curving me, the going by a cow. My game was so bad that this girl switched teams. Now, that would have been fine and dandy, but the part that got me is she switched teams and started pulling badder bitches than me bro the girl she was with was fine as fuck i was sick let me preface something really quickly bro no transphobia i have genuine love for everyone this situation was just funny to me now but at the time bro i was in the trenches bro no amount of juice world xxx and tacion and 2 a.m driving could get me out of this rut bro i was sick <laughs> for moral of these three stories don't scare the bitches because one day the bitches might scare you back